Hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here, and we are gonna talk about why extended periods of fasting, I'm gonna move this just a minute so you can see a little better maybe. Extended periods of fasting are really harsh on the female body, right? So female physiology, um, female hormones, how that works biologically for the body. Most of the time when you're looking at fasting information, you're looking at information for men right? Every single time somebody wants to like start an online fight, online fight, or, or say, this isn't true. This is what fasting does to the body, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, look at the study. Do you have a study? First of all? Yeah. Yeah. This is what this research says. Okay. Look at, look at the test subjects. Who are the test subjects? Men. They're all men. Yeah. They do these studies on the male body. This is again, like the whole first chapter of my book, The Female Pet Solution, talks about the history of nutrition and everything in our country and how they do research on men. Leave out women quite a bit. Yes, 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 yes. So you have to look at the impact for the female body specifically. And a lot of these studies, they do them so that they come up with these certain outcomes and be like, look at this, this is so great, blah, blah, blah. It's not that it's wrong, it's just not accurate for the female money. Mmm, yes. So I wanna talk about what happens in the female body and why doing extended periods of fasting are really harsh for the female body. So to set this up, I have to talk about some of the stuff first to get to this stuff. And I'm sorry this is a little messy. Again, Facebook changed its features here, so I have to write backwards. So I might add other notes, but my handwriting looks like a little kindergartner's a little bit because I'm writing backwards. You know, I started doing it again. <laughs> I was like, I want to talk about hormones here. And I started writing hormones, right? That's backwards for you guys, right? Yeah. See, see, that's how I, anyway, so I can't even look at it like this because I can only, anyway. Okay. So pardon the messy handwriting here. Um, but these are things that we work on and focus on in the 12 week challenge. I want to put a link right here because the wait list, wait list is filling up. Registration only gets released to the wait list. It's next Friday. So in almost a week, um, we only take so many people, Dr. Victoria and I only take so many people in the 12 week challenge. It includes a Dutch test. We go over Dutch test. I'm going to talk more about Dutch test. Yeah, this is backwards for you guys. I'm going to talk more about Dutch test and um, what that leads to here with being nutrient depleted and hormone issues and things like that on the effect of fasting for women um, in a little bit. So stay tuned for that. Um, but it includes this. We go over nutrition that matches your hormones and your cycle. Um, if you are in perimenopause or menopause, um, yeah. Again, so I have a whole book on uh, eating for your hormones and cycle, and I also have a whole book for perimenopause and menopause. So I also have a whole 12-week program for perimenopause and menopause. It's the same wait list that you get on right there in the comments. So prefacing all of that to talk about fasting for women and extended periods of fasting. What does that mean? What is that exactly? We're going to define some of this stuff right now. Now, these are the common accepted terms for it. If you have been working with somebody or there's some other terminology out there, sometimes when people throw out fasting, they're talking about one type of fasting and you may be thinking of a different type. Yeah. So keep that in mind that there's different things in that people are talking about for definition and that's why I'm going over this. So fasting overall, there's different types of fasting. There is daily, what I call daily intermittent fasting. This is where you have a fasted and feed window. It is a 16 hour, sort of 24 hours in a day. You have a 16 hour fast and an eight hour feed window. Now you can do uh, a 10, eight, or sorry, a 10, eight. Oh my God. Some people do a 12, 12 and they call that fasting. I'm like, that's just normal eating, a 12-12, right? Or a 10-14, or a 14-10, right? 14 hours fasted, 10 hours eating, sure, okay. 18, or 16-8 is a very common daily intermittent fasting um, window because eight hours still allows you a lot of time to get all your proteins in, um, do things you know regular through your day, have dinner with your family, all that stuff. Sure, sure. Now, but keep in mind that when sometimes people are like, yeah, I don't eat breakfast, I'm fasting, blah, blah, blah. Mm. How long have you been doing that? 
Because if that's just like you're skipping breakfast and calling it fasting, that's not fasting. You're not actually getting your body the nutrients it needs. This is different in the female body. The female body is designed to store fat. That's what it does. Literally all of our tissues, our connective tissue and everything is designed to store fat. I Sometimes people question me on that. It, it's the whole thing that I can get into, but I, I won't. It's what our bodies are designed to do, which means that, and, and a lot of you gals know this, that if you've done a diet and all of a sudden it's like, it's working, it's working. Oh, it's not working anymore. What's happening? Your body acclimated to it. That is why in the 12 week challenge, I teach you specific tactics to shift things, change things, you know, keep your metabolism on its toes. You have to push your metabolism. Doing one tactic can get you a certain amount of result, but then your body will stop. It will acclimate to it and everything will plateau. Right? Yes. Yes. So you have to keep pushing it. And one of the ways to do that is to shift and change what you're doing. Otherwise your body acclimates to it. So if you're doing this type of pattern, a 16 hour fast, eight hour feed window, you do that for a week or two, and then you stop doing it. Then you open up that feed window to a 12, 12 again. Why? Because you're training your system to do something different. And again, this is not just to eat less and people are like, Oh, well, it's just a way to eat less. No, that does not work for the female body. Deprivation, depleting yourself is not a long-term tactic. Overall, what that does is it destroys our metabolism long-term, allows us to be more fat storage in the future, and it ruins our whole brain-body connection because then the only way we feel like we can get results is if we are starving, right, and don't feel good physically, but we think we're looking good because the scale says something good anyway. So, so there's that. Now, as a preface to this, when we talk about fasting, when I recommend fasting for women, there is a whole body primer that you have to go through first. Most women are depleted to begin with. You're depl so if you've done fasting, any type of fasting, and you're like, yeah, it didn't really work for me. I didn't really feel good or it didn't this and that. Yeah, because you weren't ready for it because you were always already depleted from all the other fad diets that you've done, from all the other restrictions, all the other over exercise, all the other stress that you've been under your system. You're already starting off in a hole. You're starting off, you know, behind the I describe it like you want to be at the starting line of a race, right? Everybody's on the track. Everybody's on the starting line. The gun's about to go off. Yeah, you're going to do it here. You're not actually on the starting line. You're three blocks down the road. Yeah, that's what the depletion is leading you to. You have to prime your system, get it ready so that when you're actually at the starting line, these tactics work. Again, these are things that we teach you in the 12 week challenge. So the wait list is right there in the comments. So daily intermittent fasting, what I reference is daily intermittent fasting, 16 hour fast window, eight hour feed window. Again, there's different variances here. We go over these in the 12 week, but again, you do this for a period of time and then you stop. That is a tactic to push your metabolism. Yes. And there's certain times of the month and there's different things I recommend for women with menopause too. One day, like a full 24 hours, that's a full 24 hours of doing a fast. Now I don't recommend doing this with zero eating. You still have to have nutrient. Let me write that in there. This is, this is supported. Okay. Supportive. <laughs> See, this is backwards. Okay. This is supported with foods and you might be thinking, well, if you're eating foods, you're not fasting. You're having a limited caloric intake day. You are teasing your digestive system. You're supporting your blood sugar. So we're going to talk about that right down here when we talk about insulin resistance, leptin and ghrelin, all these other things. These are important for the female body. I am going to get sweaty and go on a rant tonight. I'm so sorry. This is going to be a longer video. So, so doing it for 24 hours, you do it supported again. And we teach you how to do this in the 12 week challenge and do it correctly for your system. So you feel good. You function really well and you wake up the next day feeling freaking amazing. I chatted with somebody today and she was like, yeah, I did this fasting day and I woke up feeling incredible. I thought I was going to wake up starving and all these other things. Nope. Feel incredible because you did it right. You did it right. And you supported your body. Now that is one day. Now, sometimes people, this is an advanced technique and I absolutely do not recommend this unless you are working with somebody to help you guide you to this point, because you cannot go from being a depleted person right? That's why we do a primer first before we even jump into this. Cause women are usually not physically, you know, physiologically ready for this, but even to jump into a 48 to a 72 hour fast, you can go up to this. 
I really, I don't recommend this. There's very few women that I, this is a good idea for. How would you know if this is a good idea or not for you? Hormone testing. If your adrenals are fried, if your cortisol levels are really off, there's no way your system is at a point where it could even think about supporting some of this stuff. There's some women, based on the results, I'm like, no, it's gonna take us months to even get to a point where we can do this successfully to have the right result. And it's not because there's something wrong with you, it's just you're at a different point, you're not at that starting line. We have to get you there. So it's important to know where you're really at. You know, it's important to understand what's happening in your system and why you've been struggling. Those are things we look at. So up to here, but again, I do not recommend these things unless you have guidance. I want to write that in there. You need, if you're going to do anything like this, you need to have, A and C. guidance for this. Do not do this on your own. Do not just jump into that on your own. That's not, that's not a good idea because it can lead to some really harsh things and actually make things worse. This is, this is one of the biggest mistakes. Women are like, oh my God, somebody did this. Or um, some of these things like a 48 hour or doing like a 5-2 schedule. That's a 5-2 schedule. If you're just jumping into that because so-and-so said it was a great idea, mm-mm, mm-mm. That can have some real harsh consequences. Real harsh consequences. Or if you're doing anything beyond 72 hours, beyond 72 hours, you know what your body does? It goes into complete shutdown mode. Beyond that, I, I call it shutdown because everything shuts down. Your digestive system is really gonna slow down. The way you absorb nutrients is gonna shift and change completely. How you detox naturally, that totally decreases. A lot of your body function literally changes because again, the female body is designed to store fat and it will not target fat for energy or anything if it is really struggling here and in a shutdown mode. And if you starve yourself, that's what it gets to. It gets, gets to a literal starvation point. And I know there's a lot of other information out there and all this other stuff, but unless you're being guided specifically by an expert who specializes in this and leads you to that point, do not do this. Do not do this. Will you get real skinny? Will it get you some weight loss? Potentially, but is that a result you're gonna keep? Absolutely not. And then the fallout from that is what you have to deal with. The fallout from that makes it 10 times harder to try and lose the weight again because you'll have rebound weight. You'll have rebound weight because of the stress impact on your system. And that rebound weight is a bear to get rid of. Why do we have that rebound weight? What the heck is happening? Oh, oh, here we go. Your body goes into a massive fat storage mode after that. Again, our systems are designed to store fat anyway. All of a sudden that gets kicked up, kicked into gear, big time, big time. It also, in, coupled with that, it eats your muscle tissue. That's where it gets the fastest energy, fastest type of energy. It will eat your muscle tissue. And muscle is one of the bigger driving points for metabolism. If you do not have enough muscle mass on your skeletal frame, you will not actually have the ability to burn fat. Again, all things that we start focusing on and priming your system for even in the 12-week challenge. So again, wait list right there. But these are, these are like all these steps that you have to go through and make sure your system is physically ready for it. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, God, that sounds like a lot. That sounds like a lot. That sounds like, ugh, I just want to like do things right now. I know. But that's the same mindset that has led you in circles before. How many diets have you done before? How many things have you done before that have maybe temporarily gotten you a result but didn't lastingly get you a result? That's why we do this. We have to sort of fix things, correct things, then be able to incorporate the tactics that are right for your system. And again, making sure you're not depleted while we're doing it. So you get results and keep them. So you will go into fat storage mode. You will eat your muscle tissue. Your body will cannibalize it. Your body will break down your muscle tissue and use it for energy. It is the fastest way for it to get energy, all that other stuff. And because of that, it throws off your blood sugar levels, everything else. Your brain runs off of sugars. And when you don't have any sugars available in your muscles, your muscles are breaking down. You don't have enough available for your liver. Your liver does not detoxing properly. It leads to these other, right? Hormone issues and things like that. You get insulin resistance issues. You have problems with leptin and ghrelin. Ghrelin is your hunger hormone. Leptin is your satisfaction hormone. So your hunger hormone will go up and your, uh, and your satisfaction hormone actually goes down. So your body is in this hunger mode. And even if you eat, you might be like, okay, I'm feeling full, but I'm not satisfied as much. I'm not satisfied as much. I'm not satisfied as much. 
then you'll constantly have cravings. You'll constantly go back to food and eating more things than what you actually need because your brain still thinks that you're starving. <laughs> That's part of the shutdown mode. Your brain still thinks that it's starving. Your brain thinks that your body is still in a starvation mode because that switch got turned on. And unless you do specific things to turn it off, it will stay on. Insulin resistance, you're gonna store fat, you're not gonna burn it, and it's gonna screw up your hunger and satisfaction hormones. Ugh, this sounds terrible. I know, I know. This is how the female body physiology works, so it's important to know this. So all of these things too, when you have this shutdown mode, this will like suck all the nutrients from your body. Vitamins, minerals, things like that. Again, how do you know if you're nutrient depleted? Boom, things that we test here. This can also throw off neurotransmitters. Again, talking about brain function, brain function, body function. All the time I talk about brain function with hormones because this is a driver up here of everything else. It really, really is. So if you've work, tried to work with your hormones but you haven't worked with your brain function at the same time, missing out on a huge piece. Again, these are all things that we talk about in the 12 week. So wait list is in the comments. But nutrient depletion, if you are depleted in nutrients, you cannot absorb correctly, you cannot detox properly, your body will not function the way that it should at optimum levels. And then of course, a lot of these things lead to hormone issues. Nut nutrient depletion leads to hormone issues. Being an insulin resistant leads to hormone issues. Having your body eat muscle and store fat, hormone imbalance issues. Oh, yeah. So we wonder why our cycles are off or we're not ovulating correctly or it's weird or we feel like garbage, we have brain fog, we're exhausted, we don't have energy to work out, it doesn't seem like we're making progress in our workouts or getting more tone or fit and we just have this like layer of fat on us. Just a layer of fat on the body that it will not get rid of. That it will not release. Oh, so frustrating. Yeah, because you're trying to do all these tactics but your body wasn't ready for it. You incorporated things, but didn't specify it for the female body. So it actually caused more problems. How many of you are like, dang it right now? <laughs> uh, come on. Uh, why is it? I know. I know. And it's not because, you know, this is the thing like women, we, we try so hard and we work so hard at it, right? And if you're thinking, really, yeah, I've worked so hard for so many years to try and eat healthy, eat clean, all this stuff. I don't do that terrible things. What the crap? It's because the information that's mainly out there for you to follow is based off of a male body. The male body pff, can jump into this. It increases their growth hormone like that. It increases their testosterone reactions. It increases all these other things. Boom, boom, boom for men. For women, our bodies are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Not enough nutrient available. We're going to shut it down. Shut it down. Hold on to every calorie. Piece of celery. Mm -mm -mm. Putting it in a fat cell. Storing it forever. Hold on to that bad boy. Holy cow. Air. <laughs> Everything. It will actually take proteins and muscle tissue and turn it into sugars and store it as fat cells. Gluconeogenesis. If you're thinking, what the actual crap? Yes. This is why it's so important to understand how the female body works and functions and why it's so different from the male body, especially when you're applying certain tactics. So not to say that a lot of information that's out there is not correct. It is correct for the male body. And that's what's not specified. That's why we get frustrated. That's why we get confused. And that's why it is so terrible. <sighs> Anybody ready to rip their hair out right now? <laughs> Cause again, you're working so hard. I know it. I know you're working hard. Nobody that I work with says, no, I don't know. I sort of tried, whatever. No. I guarantee you're watching this video right now because you're about ready to poke your own eye out because you're so frustrated. Yeah. I know. But again, it's because so much of the information out there is just, it's not designed for you. Right? I mean, think of it this way. You don't follow nutrition recommendations for a two-year-old, do you? Or a one-year-old. You're like, no, I'm not a one-year-old. Exactly. But we spend so much of our time expecting our physiology and how our meat suit functions 
to function in a different way and then we're frustrated with the lack of result that we're getting or the temporary result that's not lasting for us. Yeah, because we're not working with our systems. <sighs> All things that we can change. It's just really important to understand where your starting line is. Usually it's not actually at the start of where you think it is. We got some work to do. We got to get your body set up for it. We got to apply the right things at the right time for your system. Make sure we're targeting the things that your body needs with the Dutch test. Again, I'm sorry, this is backwards. I can't flip the video. Facebook will change it soon. <laughs> again, they just did it like a week ago, so it'll change again. But these are some of the things. Now, I've covered a lot of information in this video. I went in a lot of different, you know, covered a lot of, of topics here, and I, I touched on some things. But if you want me to do a deep dive on something specific, let me know. Put a comment below. I'm more than happy. The videos that I do and the information that I talk about is based off of questions you have. I get questions from women all over the world every single day. And then what I do videos on and information on is based on your questions. So if you're thinking, okay, but what about this? Or if there's a certain time in my cycle, I should be doing this or this. Or how does this and this work? Or how is this? Or tell me more about these things. Let me know, put a comment down below and I'll do a whole video on like a deep dive on specific things because that's what's helpful for you. My mission here is to educate women more about your body physiology and health so that you can apply the right things for you to get to and keep the right results. Not to keep spinning your wheels, not to try and find some magic, you know, exercise or supplement that's going to do all the things. No, it's working with how your body just naturally functions. We just haven't been doing that. Yeah. So, whew. all right, that's what I got for you guys today. Please let me know if you have any other questions. Again, waitlist is right there in the comments. Make sure you're getting on the waitlist. Registration opens next Friday, and the waitlist is really getting full. So, Female Fat Solution, this is on Amazon. Female Menopause Solution, also on Amazon. Books on this. My podcast is called The Female Health Solution, and my YouTube channel is called Dr. Beth Westy. You can subscribe to that to stay updated on everything, and all my videos there are archived. So if you're looking for something specific, check there. And if you look in my YouTube and you're like, hey, I didn't see this, also let me know. I will do a video on it. If you're looking for something specific, tell me about adenomyosis. Tell me about this other thing with menopause. Tell me about, you know, decidual casts or something like that. Yeah, I want to know more about it. Let me know. You can either send me a message, drop a comment, and I will put it on my list of videos to do. So whew, that's what I got for you guys tonight. I hope you have a great rest of your night, and I will see you later. Bye.